Big hello everyone and a warm welcome to St. Jude's today. Great to see you. Great to see your faces here uh, at St. Jude's and hello to anyone who's watching us uh, online. It's good to be able to gather on this uh, last Sunday of winter. Do you count today as winter? And next Sunday we're looking forward uh, to spring. Well welcome here uh, as we gather as God's people. I trust that you've got a service sheet you can follow along uh, here in the pew or you can look up to the screen if you prefer uh, to look there as we go through our service today uh, of uh, our morning service. We'll have groups for our kids uh, and children's work. We'll be heading out shortly. We'll have a children's slot uh, from Jason. Uh, we'll be thinking again today about praying and speaking about Jesus as we look forward to a month of mission starting next month. But as we begin, let me just explain why we've met together. Our prayer book tells us that we've come together to offer to Almighty God our worship, our praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear His holy word proclaimed, and to bring before Him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of His Spirit we may serve Him and know the greatness of His love. And so as we begin to gather, let me read some words uh, from the Psalms, it's from Psalm 95, some words of scripture, and then an opening prayer. <clears throat> Psalm 95 encourages us, oh come, let us sing out to the Lord, let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in Psalms, for the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. And so let's pray. God in heaven, we thank you that you are almighty, you're the Lord, you're the rock in this changing world. We thank you that we can come together to sing, we can come and worship you as our king. We thank you that we are your people by faith in Jesus. And so lift up our hearts and our minds as we come to worship Jesus today. We pray that we would give you the glory and all that's said and done. And we pray for your name. Amen. O oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he has done. Let's remind ourselves of the great things he's done as we sing our opening hymn to God be the glory.
morning, everybody. It's great to see you out today for another service at St. Jude's. So, as many of you know, we have been doing this series on evangelism. We've been looking at all these different questions. We've looked at what it is. We've looked at why we do it. We've looked at all these different things. And today we're looking at another question. Uh, but last week we were looking at um, where. Where should we evangelize? And Kerry was helping us think about that. And she was showing us pictures on the screen behind us of places she's been where she has told people about Jesus. And so boys and girls, from what Kerry told us last week, what have we learnt about where we should evangelize? What do you think? Where should we do it? Any ideas? There's Zach. Zach. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yes, everywhere. Everywhere we go, we should be telling people about Jesus. And so today, I want to take us a step further. And I want to say when. When should we evangelize? Is it a time of day we should do it? Is it five o'clock on the dot? When should we do it? And so that's what we want to look at today. Joshua, we'll get to it in a wee second. You're very eager this morning. But I want to, I want to ask you, uh, have you ever been in a situation, boys and girls, where you've been in the house and maybe your friend or maybe your brother or sister who's missing and you think to yourself, oh no, they're hiding. And you walk about the house slowly and you're thinking, is he behind the door? Is she behind the door? You look behind the door, you look under the beds, you look in the cupboards. You all, you're just anticipating them jumping out and scaring you. Have you ever been in that situation before? Pop your hand up if you have. Parents as well, adults, if you've been in that situation. Maybe last week, some of you. I've been in that situation plenty of times. When I was a kid, I'm one of three brothers. I'm the middle brother, I'm the one who's forgotten about apparently. Aww. So, uh, I am one of three brothers, and usually this would happen between me and my older brother where one of us would go missing. Usually it was towards the end of the night, towards bedtime, and we would be, and if I was one of the brothers who was hiding at that time, I would go maybe behind the cupboard door, and I would just wait, and I would wait, and I would wait for the perfect opportunity to jump out and to scare them. Sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't resist, I'm sorry. If I scared you, if I scared you, Roger, I'm sorry. But that's what we would do, and sometimes, sometimes that would work, and my brother would go, ah, and he'd be scared. But other times, he wouldn't. He'd just be standing there like, you look like a Muppet here. Like, what are you doing? And that was because he was prepared. He was prepared for what I was going to do. And in the same way, boys and girls, we need to be prepared too. We need to be prepared in two ways when it comes to following Jesus, when it comes to telling others about Jesus. And there's two ways we need to be prepared. And I'll be on the screen behind us here. Hopefully. Yes, number one, I want you to grab. When I say the word grab, I want you to grab in the air. Are you ready? So the first way we need to be prepared is to grab every opportunity God gives us to tell others about Jesus. That's the first way we need to be prepared. The second way we need to be prepared to listen and answer others when they ask us, Who do you hope in? Who do you place your hope in? Why do you place your hope in Jesus? There'll be those times, boys and girls, when people will ask you if you follow Jesus, why do you follow Jesus? Why do you put your hope in Jesus? And it's then, boys and girls, we have the opportunity to tell them, well, I follow Jesus because he loves me, he died for me, he rose again, and he offers me eternal life. That is why I follow Jesus. And in 1 Peter, he talks about this. Peter talks about this in chapter 3 and verse 15. He says, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. That basically means, boys and girls, give Jesus his place. Give Jesus his place in your heart. And he says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. And so what Peter is saying here, boys and girls, is basically there'll be times when people will ask you, why do you believe in Jesus? Why do you put your hope in Jesus? And it's then you have an opportunity to tell them why you follow Jesus. Because he loves you. Because he died for you. Because he offers you eternal life. That's why we follow Jesus. Because he loves us. And he died for us. And so let's go back. What two ways should we be prepared? Firstly, we should be prepared to grab hold of every opportunity God gives us in telling others about Jesus. And the second way we should be prepared is to listen and answer others when they ask us, who do you put your hope in? 
And so let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you um, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you came down from heaven and died on a cross so we could have eternal life and live forever with you. We pray, Lord, that when it comes to evangelism, when it comes to telling others about Jesus, we pray, Lord, that you would help us to do it at every opportunity we are given. And we pray, Lord, that you would just be with us in those times and give us the words to say. In Jesus' name, amen. I think now we're going to sing another children's song. Let's move this. Thanks, Jason. Yes, I'm going to invite uh, the Von Trapp family uh, to come and join me to help with singing uh, and dancing. And uh, last week I found this difficult to sing and do actions at the same time. So I've been practicing. And uh, if you want to do one or the other, that's quite okay. Or if you per perhaps just like to stand and look at the words and think about how we want to tell the world about what God has done, then that's quite all right. But we're going to sing Tell the World. So let's get ready for this dance anthem on your feet. Tell the world, tell everyone who hasn't heard, every boy and girl, all right, tell the world, and then we'll go around the world. Great, looks like it's going, just unmute it. Do have a seat if you need to, and I can see if this is going to happen or not. Well, not to be, not to be, uh, you can go home and you can search us on YouTube, you can catch that last week and you can follow out uh, the actions, but sorry we can't uh, bring that to you for a technical fault uh, this morning. Well, we'll just head on uh, straight into our church uh, family notices if we can uh, at this point, and there should be some slides to help us with this, thank you very much. Um, so we have just a few weeks to go on to life 22 and life 22 is our month of mission from st patrick's day uh, through to easter sunday 17th of march to the 17th of april we've got this general publicity that was out last week you might have seen it as you drove in this morning on the wall outside as well we're thinking about life that lasts and we've got a number of events on about a dozen events happening during that month and here's some ways we can be preparing towards it first of all we can pick up some of those flyers uh, and be inviting people to it. And there's specific flyers now out for our first couple of events. Uh, so we have a St. Patrick's Family Fun Day, uh, which we can welcome people to. And there's this green flyer uh, for that. We're gonna be going green that day uh, for St. Patrick's Day. Lots of fun to look forward to. Uh, some things to look forward to, petting zoo, face painting, crafts, refreshment, goodie bags, live music, and all the rest. So look forward to that, so you can pick up one of those. And our event, uh, just a couple of days later, on the 19th of March, is a men's breakfast. Uh, subtitled, probably the best free breakfast with a bishop in Belfast, guaranteed. Yes, Saturday the 19th of March, 
at 10 a.m. down in Balnify uh, Band Hall. Uh, we'd love to see uh, men come into that. So you do uh, need to book a place for that, and there's just a wee website, Eventbrite, uh, to book your place. If you don't have the internet, do speak to me. I'll book you in, no bother. Uh, and do be passing that on. Bring that uh, to a mate. Bring a mate with you for that first event. So you can see, indeed, all our events if you go to the Eventbrite page, and you'll see them listed there, uh, other events coming up during that month of mission. Uh, do also be getting ready for Life 22 by picking up a, a new prayer diary, Pray with a Passion. Uh, these came hot off the press last week, and if you haven't got one already, do take one and be praying uh, in the weeks ahead as we look forward to that. And speaking of prayer, this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, isn't it? And there's a great opportunity to, to call that as a day of prayer, and we've got opportunity to do that here in this building. Uh, we've got two opportunities in the morning. Uh, is an Ash Wednesday Book of Common Prayer uh, service. That'll be a traditional prayer book service here in the side chapel, part of our midweek. Do join us uh, for that if you can. And then in the evening, it'll be more contemporary prayer gathering service uh, here in the main body. We'll have some music, we'll have some creative ways of praying uh, for the world, uh, as we will this morning for what's going on, but also to pray for our month of mission. So do, if you're a Christian, join us on Wednesday for that, maybe in the morning, or maybe you can come in the evening if you are working. Love to see you join us just for that special day of prayer. And do be making use of the prayer with a passion diary as well as you take one with you. Uh, some other uh, events just to let you know happening outside in the diocese. Uh, as Lent begins this week, uh, our bishop will be putting together some online daily devotionals. So do check them out. Uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. You'll see it's called A Fresh Look uh, as our bishop looks into the, the Gospel of Luke, 24 chapters. He's not going to cover every verse, but just give us a daily devotional uh, during this month so you can uh, look out for A Fresh Look. And you can look out for the bishop this week if you want to, uh, to see him. He is cycling around the diocese, uh, raising money. Uh, for, for very good causes. There's a little leaflet at the back. Uh, I know Stephen's going to join him uh, for a little cycle this week. He's doing uh, some in the neighborhood here, and he's going to be here on the front lawn at St. Jude's this Friday. What time is that? Do you remember? About 11. So if you want to bring a water bomb down, we can, we can soak the bishop, or uh, maybe a bucket of ice. Uh, we'll open up uh, to him and pray for him as he cycles around the diocese. So there's information on that uh, at the back and also information of what's going on in the diocese uh, on St. Patrick's Day at the cathedral, if you're interested in going to that. And just uh, speaking of cathedrals, one other thing to uh, let you know about is something going on at the end of next month, the 26th of March, uh, a Proclaim conference, uh, some leaders in the Anglican Church coming to that, Archbishop Ben Kwashi from, uh, from Josh in Nigeria, and Archbishop Foley Beach coming from, uh, from the American Church in North uh, America, along with Reverend Nick Tucker, a teaching day on what is the gospel? What is the gospel? How do we proclaim it in the 21st century? It's called Proclaim. It's down at the cathedral, Belfast Cathedral, £10 for wage, £5 for on wage. Pick up the details if you want to know more about that. Well, thanks uh, for coming to St. Jude's this morning. Thanks for your offering, if you've given any into the plate. And do please note that next month uh, is a gift day or a gift month. We have these little uh, gift day envelopes and all the monies that come in in that is going towards our month of mission, towards outreach, which we budget about three and a half grand. So if you can give generously towards that, uh, please do pick that up and drop that in at some stage in the month of March. I think that's uh, all our notices for today. Sorry we didn't have a children's song, but let's pray for our children and our, our youth as they head off uh, to their groups now in a moment. Father God, we thank you for uh, those who teach our little ones of the Lord Jesus, who pass on to the next generation the great truths of our great God. I pray that you'd help them and equip them. Pray for our little, uh, little stars, our kids' zone and youth zone. Pray for their leaders as they now meet and proclaim Jesus there. Lord, equip them and help them. Through Jesus, we pray. Amen. We say goodbye to you now as you head on to your groups. Hope you have a great morning.
And as they head on to their groups, I'm going to invite up Roger. Uh, he's going to come up to the, the eagle now and lead us in the next part of our service as we go to prayer and as we hear God's word read uh, and affirm our faith in God. So let's, uh, as we sit, be ready to pray. Thanks, Roger. We'll begin with the confession of our sins. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and and word word and and deed, through negligence, negligence, through weakness, weakness, through through our own own deliberate fault, fault, by by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and and repent repent of all our sins. For the the sake of your Son, Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, who died died for us, Forgive, forgive us all, all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness, in newness of life, to the, to the glory, glory of your name. name. Amen. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins, and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for the Sunday before Lent. O God, our teacher and our judge, enrich our hearts with the goodness of your wisdom and renew us from within, that all our actions, all our thoughts and all our words may bear the fruit of your transforming grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we begin our prayers with a prayer for the people and the government of Ukraine. O Lord, our governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend to your merciful care the people and government of Ukraine, that being guided by your providence, they may dwell secure in your peace. Grant to the leaders of Ukraine and all in authority wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve their people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart in the nations of the world that working and witnessing together we may live in justice and peace and change the hearts of those who would make for conflict and war. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who has knit together in one family all the nations of the earth, remove far from us the evil of war. Pour out upon the leaders of the nations your spirit of peace. Restrain the passions of those who plan aggression. Strengthen the hands of those who strive for justice and peace. And hasten the time when the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdom of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. A prayer for Life 22 and our month of mission. Father, we acknowledge our own diffidence about sharing our faith. That's why our Life 22 month of mission should encourage us anew to share the good news of the gospel with other people. Father, we thank you that we are here in church at all. Someone first helped us to understand what Christian faith was all about. So help us by our actions and prayers, now to support the Life 22 month of mission. Our church can only continue if we go on doing what was done for us, sharing faith in action or explanation. We pray that the Life 22 events and get-togethers will find our willing and active support and that many eyes will be open to the glory of the gospel. 
We pray too that you would especially encourage and enthuse Peter, Jason and Kerry as they lead this church in the Life 22 month of mission. And let's finish our prayers with the words Jesus taught us when we pray to say, Our Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come your, your will be done, be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, us give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. Lead, lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Our Bible reading is taken from Colossians chapter 4, beginning at verse 2. And it's on the order of service. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly, as I should. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And we'll continue with the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess the faith of the Church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you, Roger, for leading us in that midsection as we uh, declared our faith, as we heard God's word read, and as we prayed uh, for the needs of the world and for our church. Well, we're going to remain standing now as we sing before the sermon. We're going to sing of what Christ did for us. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you created. Let's worship him in song.
Trust you can uh, follow this, the, the Bible reading uh, that Roger brought to us on our service sheet, or it's on page 1184 if you prefer, but let's pray as we come to God's Word. Let's pray. Dear Father God, we thank you for your Word, the Bible. Um, please help me as I would speak from it, that I may make it clear, and please help us as we listen, that we may have ears to hear. And we pray this in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Well, it is a privilege, isn't it, to have our doors open today to welcome folks in here for this service this morning. And next month, we have a great opportunity uh, to reach out to others beyond our doors in this month of mission, Life 22. It's an open door of opportunity for each of us, because this is what we're called to as the church. It's what the Apostle Paul asked Christians indeed to pray for. Did you see that at the start of our reading? Look back with me at the opening of our reading. Colossians 4 and verse 2, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message, so we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. So as Paul wrote to the Christian church in Colossa, he mentions a door. Did you see the door in our reading? Paul wants them to pray that God would open up that door. But what sort of door is he thinking about? Well, look where Paul is as he writes. He says he's in, he's in prison, he's in chains. So he wrote this letter behind a closed door, a prison door. So are the Colossians to ask God to open the door up of his prison cell? Is that the door in mind? Well, that would be my prayer request, right? Wouldn't you pray that if you were in prison for being a Christian? I'm a Christian. Get me out of here. That's the sort of thing we'd pray for. Surprisingly, Paul is not asking for that door of his prison cell to be opened. Instead, the apostle has got a different door in mind. What does he ask the church to pray for? Verse 3, that God may open a door for our message. A door for our message. Paul himself, sure, he does want to be released, but he doesn't ask for a prayer about that. Rather, the word, the message would be released so people would hear of Christ. And so this is a metaphor, this open door, that helps us think about what we're supposed to be about as a church. And here this morning we have two key principles from the church at Colossa in the first century and St. Jude's church here in the 21st century. We want to be two things. We want to be a praying church and we want to be a proclaiming church. Let's take them each in turn. First, God's church is to be a praying church. This is our first priority. 
This is the first thing to say this morning. We're to be talking to God. But what exactly are we to be praying about? Well, the apostle who had been praying in this very letter, some great prayers for God's people, he now encourages believers to turn to prayer. He says, devote, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Yes, the Bible calls us as Christians to pray, to pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And here the church is called to continue steadfastly in prayer. It's good to pray, isn't it, as we come together like we've done today. We're very mindful of what's going on in Europe. We've prayed for the peace amidst the war brought upon Ukraine by Russia, and we continue to pray on as the scriptures remind us to intercede for everyone, for kings and those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. But Christians are not only to pray in moments of crisis, in times of war, no, our prayers for the world are shaped by the reality of God's kingdom that has come. And so we are taught to pray, aren't we, as we've said this morning, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you see this means that our prayers are shaped by God and by his kingdom and his gospel. We're to be asking God, therefore, to open doors so the message of Christ, the good news, might go out. So back to that door. Well, some doors are closed, aren't they? Most doors open, most closed, but some get jammed and hard to open. Well, this uh, is a prayer that, that a message or a word might go out. It's called the mystery of Christ. And so a praying church asks God to to open doors of opportunity so that message, the good news, can go out. Some doors might seem closed. We think of those uh, around us. We think people are so close to the gospel. But we pray, and who opens the door? God does. God opens the door. Only God opens the door so messages of the gospel can go out. Uh, Paul speaks of it here as the mystery of Christ. It's not something that's... Uh, hidden or, or strange, something you have to work out, a code like a Sudoku or what's the new thing, Wordle, people try to work out these codes. No, it's not like that. It's pretty plain and made clear. It's been entrusted to Paul as he wrote in the opening chapter. The mystery hidden for the ages and for generations has now been revealed to his saints, that is Christians. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the mystery of Christ. It's the gospel. It's the hope of glory. It's been made known in the person of Christ Jesus. And so this is the message of the apostles of the New Testament, of the whole Bible and the church and it really is the best news you can ever hear. In a world full of death, decay, and war, and sadness, don't we need to hear of this news? It's what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. It's about life, life that lasts. What a great opportunity we have this spring to hold forth life that lasts. Uh, Paul, in this letter, describes it like this, that we were once alienated. We were God's enemies, far from him, but now reconciled through Christ's death. That's the message of the gospel, a great gospel to proclaim. And no wonder then Paul prays or asks this church to pray for an open door so that good news can go out. So church, as Lent begins, let's be a praying church. Wherever we can find a place to pray, at home, in this building, Let's be praying. Let's be doing that on Ash Wednesday as we have opportunities to gather in the morning or evening. And let's be doing that throughout this month of mission. And do make good use of that new prayer diary. It's on our life table. We've got a table at the back with all the things happening in our month of mission. Do pray, please. And as we pray, we're praying for those events during Life 22. Let's be praying for those who have the opportunity to speak, our evangelistic speakers. Mentioned already, Bishop David will speak at our men's breakfast. Pray for him. 
And pray for others who speak of Jesus. Do they need your prayers? Of course they do. Look at Paul. He needed prayer. Look at Paul, the great apostle, the gifted preacher, the evangelist. He asked Christians to pray for him. He knew he was a weak man. And he knew that only God could open the door so Paul could make it clear, verse 4. Yes, who too faced temptation to change the message? Make it softer, easier to swallow. Don't talk about sin or judgment. Well, that's what our church leaders are tempted not to do, to speak of two R's, wrath and repentance. Wrath, I know it begins with W, but easy to remember. Wrath, that's God's control, settled anger towards all evil and sin. And that's actually a good thing. It's a good thing that those who declare war on other countries will be held to account. It's a good thing that war crimes will ultimately be punished. God's wrath on, on sin. But also repentance. How we need people to speak of repentance. Turning from sin. Turning from selfishness. From our own way. And turning to the Lord Jesus. That's what we want to be declaring as we declare the gospel so Paul says, pray for me that I would proclaim Christ clearly. That's what we should do. And how we need you to pray. We all need to pray today for those who will speak. So will we? Will we devote ourselves to prayer, asking God to open up these doors? Will you pray for us? Those who declare God's word from this pulpit on Sundays. Those who, who do it upstairs in, uh, in our kids zone or across the road in youth fellowship please do uh, pray for them. And as we pray, we can be thankful, as Paul says here, thankful and watchful that God does hear our prayer. He opens doors. And we're thankful for this great opportunity in this month of mission for answered prayers already about events, uh, about venues, and about speakers. God's been so kind towards that. And so doors are being opened. And so we must pray that God, as he opens that door, that the message would go out. As we pray for those who speak his word, we pray for those who listen. Listen. That they would be open to having life in Christ. Those will invite, those will bring along. Well, along with being a praying church, we're called to be a proclaiming church. And this takes us to our second priority from this passage. Now, proclaiming is about declaring or simply announcing something publicly. And here in this context, it means simply talking or speaking about Jesus. We read here of Paul's desire to proclaim the mystery of Christ. He says, pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. But you know, the apostle was not the only one who was speaking about Jesus. Those in the congregation at Colossae were also to speak of Christ. And so the apostle urges them to, to proclaim Christ both in their walk and in their talk. I brought along a couple of visual aids this morning. It uh, might help us uh, focus and remember mm. some things. Can you see what I've got uh, in my hands? Uh, visual aid, it's a pair of walking boots. And what do you think I do with these boots? What are these boots made for doing? Walking, that's it. Of course, these boots are made for walking, not walking all over people, as the, as the song goes on to say. But I do like to go do some walking. Uh, some hill walking, walking in the moorns. And I've covered a, a number of peaks with these old boots. They're about 20 years old, about half my age. I love uh, walking. But you know, as I head up into the mountains, I, I don't just throw on my flip-flops or just whatever I grab. I need to be prepared to have right footwear as I walk and pack my bag with my raincoat, my gloves, my hat, whatever I need uh, for going for a walk. Now, Paul here also says about thinking about our walk, and we've got to walk in wisdom, he says. Look at verse 5. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. I knew that was going to happen. There's a boot away. Be wise in the way you live or, or act or walk towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Well, before we come to our talk, think first of all about our walk. As followers of Christ, how we walk, it really matters. We've all come from different homes, uh, neighborhoods this morning. I'm not going to ask you to put your hand up to see who walked this morning. 
I'm probably the closest to this building I didn't walk. But uh, tomorrow we'll be going to different places, uh, maybe walking there or driving, uh, our work, our school, our leisure. That's where we literally walk. It's where we live out our lives. It's amongst outsiders, as Paul puts it here. Or as I've heard it put elsewhere, it's amongst our fans, our family, our friends, uh, our acquaintances, uh, N for neighbors, and S for strangers. That's who we live amongst outsiders. But how will we walk amongst them? Will we walk wisely or foolishly? Paul urges Christians in Ephesus to be wise with similar language. He says this, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Well, what makes us walk wisely is Christ, our true wisdom. And so if you want to walk wisely, walk in wisdom, you first of all need to be in Christ. You need to be a follower of him. And as a Christian, you need to stay close to him and his words. If we want to know his ways, we go to his word. So consider your walk as Lent is about to begin. Are we walking wisely in our attitudes and our behaviors? How are we known amongst others? The grumbler or the encourager? The person who wastes others' time or the person who has time for others? We need to walk wisely. Otherwise, we've become stumbling blocks uh, to others. We're literally like a, a boulder in the way. Now, we must make the most of every opportunity, or as Jason taught us this morning, we need to grab every opportunity. The time is short. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. There's such uncertainty remaining in our world and our lives. And you know, as outsiders uh, watch us, those who claim to walk in Christ, well, they should see a difference. And in a sense, our, our very lives are the evangelistic events that our friends, our family, our acquaintances, our neighbors and strangers come to. Hence, Paul underlines here the importance of our walk. So think of fitwear. Think of our walk. Are we walking wisely? Yes, Christians are those who walk wisely, but we also talk gracefully. We talk gracefully. We pray for open doors, opportunities to talk of Jesus, and when God answers our prayers, well, we open our mouths, we speak. Look at the last verse of our reading. Paul says, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Well, I brought another visual aid with me to help remember this verse. Can you guess what it is? It's some salt, some salt. Uh, what did we use salt for? But we put it on our food, don't we? We sprinkle a little bit uh, over our Irish stew uh, on, the, on the hob. Or who likes to put it on their chips? I can't have chips without salt, of course. Um, why do we do that? Well, it brings out the flavor, doesn't it? Just a little salt, uh, not too much. It brings out the flavor. Well, Paul here echoes Jesus' very words to his disciples. He said to them, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its taste, how shall it be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. Of course, we don't carry around a salt shaker with us everywhere. This is just a visual aid to remind us. Uh, but our talk, just like our walk, is to be flavorsome. It's to be Christ-like. And so when our speech, when our words are, are seasoned with salt, well, they are graceful full of God's grace, full of his, his love, his compassion. So think about our words, what we say. Think about our conversations. What do we talk about? If our talk is to be salty amongst others, it's, it's not to be dull, dreary. No, it's to be interesting. And isn't Jesus the one of whom we really want to speak about? Yes, Christians are those who, who talk about Jesus. We want to proclaim him in our walk and in our talk. 
if we shared our story with others, we'll have spoken of our faith in Jesus, how he's helped us through difficult times and through the good times also. It's not just what we say, of course, but how we say it. We're to have uh, courage to share the good news, but also to be wise to go about it. So think about when we speak about what we did at the weekend. You meet someone this week, speak about church with some enthusiasm. Or when we invite someone to Life 22, we speak with some passion. We want to be winsome as we ask others to come. We should be careful, shouldn't we, about what we talk about and how we say it. Uh, here in our Northern Ireland culture, our humor is full of sarcasm. That can be funny, can't it? But taken too far, it can turn into slander. Of course, we all want to have some crack, but we should be careful lest our joking turns unsavory and loses saltiness. How we need to watch what we say and how we say it. So when our walk, when our talk reflects, reflects Christ's wisdom, then outsiders might just look in and take notice. Unbelieving friends and family may just ask us why we live and talk as we do. Why didn't we join in with that joke at someone else's expense? Why didn't we laugh uh, at that? Well, when God opens the doors, we need to be ready to speak, don't we? We need to be ready in those moments so that we know how we may answer everyone. Earlier, Jason <clears throat> had this verse on the screen from the Apostle Peter. But in your heart set apart Christ as Lord, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Well, those who walk wisely and talk graciously are prepared to do so. Do you think you know how you might ought how you ought to answer each person. Uh, if someone says to you, well, okay, you went to church, fair enough, but the Bible, that's just full of fairy stories, how would you answer it? Or if we think about war in our world, I mean, isn't religion the root of all evil? Or how can we even know that God exists? Well, some of us were thinking about those questions uh, this week, answering tough questions with Jesus in our small groups. Uh, and as promised, uh, there's a little book called Good Question, uh, real answers to life's big questions. There's some of those just on our life table. If you're interested, you could pick one of those up. They may help us answer some common questions that others might have. And it shows us how they're answered by the man who stands at the heart of Christianity, Jesus Christ. Indeed, this week, in our video from Jeremy Marshall, we were thinking about answering tough questions with Jesus. It was really helpful. Just share some of the things he said. He spoke about stories being so useful in dealing with tricky questions. For better, for worse, uh, stories are valuable, so highly valued in our society today. People may not want to hear objective truth, but telling a story is a great way to respond to a question. Tell a gospel story. So, for example, what about other faiths, someone might ask? Well, tell about the Samaritan woman from John chapter 4. Speak of the tender way in which Jesus breaks down barriers and explains what true worship looks like. When asked about sex or sexual immorality in our sex-obsessed world, we can think of John chapter 8. Tell of the actions of Jesus with the woman taken in adultery and of the way in which, without condoning her sinful living, he challenges the hypocrisy of those around her, calling her to receive his grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Do we see just those two examples? That It's straight from the Bible. It's what Jesus did, teaching uh, others, often in, in stories called parables. That also makes the Bible available to people and accessible as we speak in our own words. Yes, God's word is more powerful than, than anything we can say just from our intellect, or from our own creativity. Because we want to make much of Jesus with others, because that's what the Bible is all about. And so in answering questions with the Bible, even if we put it in our own words, we'll keep the flow of our conversation pointing towards Christ. When we tell stories about Jesus, we're always on the right road, aren't we? Helping people see that ultimately, what we believe about him is what really matters. 
Well, if you missed that session, uh, maybe you go on YouTube, search A Passion for Life this afternoon, and look for Answering Tough Questions with Jesus. Indeed, all the training material for Life 22 is on their channel. Or if you prefer just reading, grab hold of Good Question. Well, this morning we're thinking in this series about proclaiming Jesus and praying. We're a praying church. We're a proclaiming church. And so may God open doors for the message of Christ to go out this spring during Life 22. May we keep on praying, keep on proclaiming. May we be a church that walks in Christ and talks about him. Let me pray to that end. Let's pray. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Father God, we are so thankful uh, for how you hear our prayer. Thank you for answering prayers uh, that have been prayed this morning in your will, in your way. We thank you for the opportunity to proclaim at Christ this spring. And we continue to pray for ourselves and where you've placed us, that we would be praying in our homes as the church scattered, that we'd be proclaiming Jesus Christ both in our walk and in our talk, that we would be his witnesses where you've placed us amongst family, friends, amongst our uh, acquaintances, our neighbors, and even amongst uh, the strangers. Lord, we need uh, your help to be wise as we walk in Christ, walk wisely, uh, and speak with grace, with uh, salty conversations. Lord, help us by your Spirit as we go on proclaiming Jesus in word and deed. And we pray to his name and his glory. Amen. Well, I invite you to stand with me now for our final song today, our closing hymn. Uh, it's called Hear the Call of the Kingdom. And the verse, uh, the chorus says this King of heaven, we will answer the call. We will follow, bringing hope to the world, filled with passion and a power to proclaim salvation in Jesus' name. Let's stand up and sing out to Jesus.
Thanks again for joining us uh, today. Don't forget to visit the Life Table on the way out or other events uh, just at the back uh, of the church building. But as we stand, let's hear this closing prayer from Scripture. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever.